walk with me and get ready to supercharge your brain and body with this quick and easy workout where we'll transform your learning abilities. This is Thinking on the Move, where we work our brain and our body at the same time. The idea is to keep our brains and bodies and souls healthy and active so that we can live as we choose. We're gonna go side to side. This is bilateral stimulation. We can cross our arms in front of us also. I'm Kim and thank you for being here. We are better together. We always start with a youth connection along with this bilateral stimulation of where we are uh, crossing over the hemispheres of our brains. That's how I understand it anyways. And if we cross our arms in front of us and also going side to side, that's what we are doing with the bilateral stimulation. And we do a youth connection where we are waking up the, that area of our brain that we haven't accessed in a while. But we want to wake that up and get those neurons and dendrites firing and growing. Okay, so we are gonna think about summer from when you were younger. So from your youth, think about your summers and what did you like about summer? I know I love the longer days with more time off for breathing and relaxing. And I remember my summers from Michigan where Sometimes I remember I had to go to bed and it was still light outside, but it was like my bedtime. The sun doesn't set there in Michigan in the summer until about 10 o'clock. All right, so what else did you like about the summer from your youth? Let that live in your mind for a bit. If you want to, then share in the comments what you liked about the summer. All right, we're gonna move on now to hamstring curls. And this is something that I call give a square, where I'm gonna be giving you a square virtually, and I'm gonna ask you to create something with it and use your fingers to draw. So like here's a square, and then I'll, I just drew a tic-tac-toe board. But you can make it into whatever you want. And I'm gonna keep giving you squares. We're gonna do it for a little while. So your, the idea is to get your brain really thinking creatively. Okay, here we go. Here's your first square. And another one. And another one. And another one. Okay, and another one. And another one. Okay, now switch to your non-dominant hand. And now this time you're gonna draw with that hand. And I'm gonna give you another square. Here we go. Okay, 
Okay, and another one. And another one. And another square. Okay, one of mine was a square duck, because why not? You're doing awesome. Now we are going to do squats. And the reason that I like to include squats are because it increases blood flow to the brain. And that's one of the things that we really wanna do with this is increase blood flow and oxygen to the brain. That is the key thing. The blood is bringing the oxygen to our brain. Okay, so with these squats, we are gonna be doing vocabulary. So I'm gonna share with you some words, words that I may have been familiar with or maybe they're brand new to me, but they're words that I didn't really feel like I knew that well. And then I'll ask you, so I'll give you the definition, and then I will ask you to think of an image in your mind that goes along with that word. So we're kind of uh, printing that in your brain for an, an additional connection to help you remember the word. And we're learning new things here. Every time we are learning new things in our brain, then the dendrites are growing, and that is what we want. Okay, assiduous, which means showing great care and perseverance. Showing great care and perseverance. Now, think of an image in your mind of what goes along with that. The next word is austere, which means severe or strict in manner, attitude, or appearance. Now what image goes along with that for you? Severe or strict in manner, attitude, or appearance, austere. Ineffable, too great or extreme to be expressed in words. Again, ineffable, too great or extreme to be expressed in words. What image do you have for that? I just realized I should have been doing something with my arms. Okay. The next word is sanguine, optimistic or positive, especially in an apparently bad or difficult situation. And fun fact on that one, I did not know how to pronounce it, so I had to ask Google. Sanguine, optimistic or positive, especially in an apparently bad or difficult situation. Okay, what's your image for that one? Okay, we're gonna continue doing squats for just a minute here. So I would ask you to consider subscribing if you're enjoying this. It would help me out a lot trying to grow my channel. I'm a middle school teacher and trying to uh, monetize this channel. And so it would help me out a lot if you like it. If you wanna subscribe, you can just click the button. We're gonna transition now and we're gonna be walking up and back. And 
up and back. Walking up and back is good because it's moving, we're being active, but also walking backwards isn't something that we do that often, so we're doing something a little different, which is good for our body, but it's also good for our balance. And we wanna continue to work on that as we are aging. Aging. This is a read aloud and it's a cognitive workout. Reading aloud can improve critical thinking, problem solving, language processing skills, and memory. Adults don't really get to do it that often. And so that's why I'm including it here. We're also learning new things with our read alouds I try to find articles that I think are very interesting that go along with the theme of the channel of thinking on the move, brain activity, health. All right, we'll find out why learning new things is so important. I found this information on envisionexperience.com, also norwellpublicschools.org, and I found the same information on various other sites because I wanna, I always wanna make sure that I am using uh, high quality resources. Okay, here we go. It's titled, The Brain and How We Learn. You are born with at least 100 billion brain cells, which are called neurons. As you listen to, talk about, or practice something, fibers called dendrites grow out of your neurons. These are things all in your brain. Learning is built as your network of dendrites grow higher and higher with new dendrites sprouting from existing dendrites. So like I picture them like the roots of a plant. Just they keep growing, growing. In other words, you're building new knowledge upon the things you already know, like a tree sprouting twigs from existing branches. So I guess it, it is the same as the, um, the roots also, because I think the roots mirror what you see on the surface. Growing dendrites takes time and practice. When two dendrites grow close together, chemical or electrical messages can be sent from one neuron to another through the content contact point between the dendrites, which is called the synapse. Learning a subject or skill involves growing topic-specific dendrites to connect specific neurons at specific synapses. Your neurological network grows more and more massive with each new piece of information learned. You can grow as many as 10,000 connections, synapses, for each of the 100 billion neurons that you have. So if you wanna do the math on that, it is mind boggling. As you practice something, your related dendrites develop a thick fatty coating. Thicker dendrites pass signals over the synapses more quickly. The coding also reduces interference, enabling you to come up with the answers more quickly. This is, I just think this is so cool. And it's probably, maybe because I'm a teacher, maybe it's good that I'm a teacher and I like this stuff. Hopefully you like it too. Your volume of synapses is constantly changing and some are stronger than others. Weak synapses become stronger through practice and learning. No matter how many synapses a neuron has, it still has the potential to grow more, which is proof that practice makes perfect. All right, way to go. You guys are doing great. Now it's time to move on to knees. When we do knees, 
I like to pull in the abs, my abs, and try to get your knees up as high as you can comfortably, but challenge yourself. This is called the answer is. And so the answer that we're doing today is four. And we're gonna take turns of coming up with different questions that the answer would be for. And they can be math problems or they can be different kinds of things too. It doesn't have to be math. All right, we'll take turns. And if you get one that I say later, then that's great. It means we're in sync. How many quarters are there in a dollar? If you have eight pencils and you give away half of them, how many pencils do you have left? How many sides does a square have? If you subtract, subtract two from six, what is the result? How many seasons are there in a year? Sixteen divided by four. How many legs does a chair usually have? What is the square root of 16? And about how many weeks are there in a month? All right, well, we got this. And again, I'm saying it again, we're better together. I'm here with you, and you're here with me. Now we are going to work on balance because balance is one of the things that you really need to work on as we age. It helps us to prevent falls and um, there's a lot of other good reasons to too. So with this, we're, it's good to have your arms out. And then also, if you want to have something close to you that you can grab onto just in case, because I don't want anybody to fall. All right, so, and as we are doing this, I'm gonna be moving my legs around. And it doesn't have to be, you don't have to follow the way I'm doing it exactly. You can do it however feels good to you. And this is a free think where I'm gonna ask you to let your mind think about all other things related to a topic without pausing or censoring your thoughts, even if they are unconventional or unrelated, that's okay. So our topic is healthy food. All right, go, but keep practicing your balance too. I'm gonna switch legs. And it's okay if you if you tap your foot down, it's okay, just start over. There's, there's no problem there. Just start again. I do everything in my life. Just try again. A lot of times I have to try a lot of times.
right. Now we're going to do heel digs where I'll back up a little more where you're just putting your heel out in front of you. And we're going to slow it down a little bit, cool down. And I'd like to know what would you like to see more of or what should I add to these thinking on the moves? What would you like to see? Put it in the comments and then I will do my best to add it. Now this is kindness connection. So in your mind, think about either a kindness that you received that somebody did for you or a kindness that you have done for somebody else. So I'll give you a couple seconds to bring that to your mind. Remember, how does it feel? How does it feel in your body, that kindness? Maybe a feeling of lightness or happiness, positivity, maybe vibrance. It's probably different for everybody and the situation is different. that your body remember that feeling. Intend another kindness. Would you like to intend another kindness in your day today or soon? You could think about what you might do or just being aware that you want to intend another kindness, I think will help you to see one come about and take that opportunity. All right, well, we're ending now. It's time we're closing it down. And uh, I would like you to make it your mission to do four of these a week. I think you will see results, you'll feel more energized, more focused, organized, and maybe even a little bit smarter, at least more knowledgeable. And the reason I say four times a week is because being consistent is so important in anything that we do. And I like to say that consistency is the magic multiplier. If you are consistent, then it will help in, I think, almost every area of your life. I think in friendships and relationships, financially, healthy eating, being consistent is important. So it's the magic multiplier. All right, well, you did it. Yay, you. Thank you for thinking on the move. I think your brain and your body thank you. And if you like this, do another quick video now. Just click the link. Bye.